So I had a question during the break time, which I'll answer for everybody. So if you have a question during the class, don't be afraid to ask, because probably somebody else has the same question. Okay? I'm not sure if you understood exactly. So if you ask me a question, it helps. So a student asked me about explain again about compound interest rate and effective interest rate. Okay? So I'll explain again. So there's a difference between getting paid interest at the end of the year and getting paid interest every three months. The difference is compounding effect. Compounding means adding on. How do you say adding on or compounding in Korean? Hmm? Adding on or compounding, how do you say that in Korean? Chuga, adding. So let's look at the example. If I get paid interest at the end of the year, I get 4% of 15,000 is 600. I end up with 15,600. Okay? If I get, uh, sorry, can somebody wake up that, those guys at the back of the class? The class has to be gone again. Okay? So if I get paid the interest every three months, it means that I'm going to get 1%, right? Every three months is a quarter of a year. A quarter of four is 1%. So I get 1% every three months. That's 4%, okay? So I get 1% at the start. That's going to be 150, okay? 1% of 15,000. But the point is, this is added on. Juga. So I don't, next time I don't get 1% of 15,000. I get 1% of 15,150. Okay? That's the point of compound interest. So the next month I get 151.5, not 150. Okay? Then that's added on. 15301.5 is going to be added on here. 1% of that is going to be 153. Then the next one. 1% 1 of this will be 154. In the end, we'll end up with 15,609. That's higher than 15,600. So if you're depositing your money, do you want to get paid the interest at the end of the year or every three months? Every three months. Every three months. Why? Because of compound effects of the interest, right? So to do this, we can find out the effective interest rate using this equation. Okay. We don't have to understand where this equation came from. All we need to understand is this is the equation we use. Okay, to find out the effective interest rate, which is going to be higher. Another way we can do that, maybe an easier way, if you don't like the effective interest rate, you don't, if you don't like the effective interest rate, we, we don't have to find the effective interest rate. We can do this another way. Okay, we can use months instead of years. So, in the, in the number two, uh, we have the future value of 10,000 in 10 years. How many years is, how many months is in 10 years? 120. So we use 120. We use months instead of years. Okay? And if we are getting paid 3% a year, how much is that a month? It's going to be zero. It's going to be uh, 0.25%. Okay? 3 divided by 12, 0.25. Okay? So then I just do this one. So I get this. And it's going to be the same answer as we got the other way. Okay? 1.025 uh, times 120. Okay? Do you understand? We can do it that way too, using the months instead of the years. So we have two choices. We can use effective interest rate, or we can use months as the time. N here just means time. Right? N, the number of times, either monthly or yearly. They are two different ways. So do you have any more question about that? If we go to the monthly instead of the yearly, we can either make the calculation by months and adjust the interest rate accordingly, or we can find the effective interest rate. Okay, so then let's move on. Uh, can you see the, this okay with the light on? So we're going to try and find 
Annuity is next. Annuity is a stable cash flow. Okay? Annuity is a stable cash flow. We get the same money every time. So we get, for example, $3,000 every year for the next five years. Okay? The last time we looked at the company was getting different money every year. When we get different money, we have to calculate present value of this and present value of this. If it's different. But if it's the same money, we can use an equation. And we don't have to calculate the present value of all these years and add them together. Okay? We can find a shorter way in an equation. So we can use this equation. Present value of an annuity is annuity over the interest rate multiplied by 1 minus 1 over 1 plus the interest rate times n. Okay? But anyway, it looks complicated, but the only inputs we need here, we need to know the amount of the annuity, the amount of stable money we're receiving, we need to know the interest rate, and the time. Okay? If we know those three things, we just put them into the equation. Okay? And then we get the answer. So it looks very difficult or complicated, but we have to think about it in an easy way. All we have to do is put the right number in the right place and make the calculation. Do you understand? Even if you don't understand all the English in the question, just figure out. I need to find the present value, right? So in the question there must be an annuity, there must be an interest rate, and there must be a time. So even if you don't understand the English in the question, find the annuity, find the interest rate, and find the time, and put them into the equation. Okay? Don't overcomplicate getting the answers. Okay? Just do it in a simple way. So let's look at the options here. We have to decide which is better: receiving a thousand dollars every year for the next five years. So here's a diagram: a thousand dollars after year one, year two, year three, year four, and year five. Receiving four thousand dollars today, or receiving five thousand five hundred after five years. So we have to compare all these things at the same time. So we want to find the present value of this. We don't need to find the present value, we already know B is 4,000. And we just find the present value of C, which we already did, that kind of calculation. Okay? So let's try the first one, A. Okay, we receive $1,000. What is $1,000? What's the word for this? Annuity. Okay, so that's A in the equation, 1,000. Every year, for how long? Five years. Where does five go in the equation? N. N is five. Okay? What's I? Five percent. The interest rate is five percent. So just do the equation. One thousand. Point zero five. And five. Okay? So try to do the equation. You can see well, you can see on your book on page 21, we have, or, or sorry, on page 20, we have the present value of an annuity, right here. Present value of annuity equals annuity over. Okay? So you just need to put in the three things the annuity, the time, and the interest rate.
Ah, não tinha um nome de Ah, nem pode ter. E a última. Não é fácil. Бой вообще не надо считать третью, надо считать по вот этой. Did you write out the equation properly? Did you write out the equation here with the right numbers? Have you passed that? Well, we'll help you. So come up and write out the equation and we can do it together. Can anybody tell me where is the, it's almost correct, but where is the mistake? This should be five, right? Okay, so from this stage, you wrote down correctly, you just need to do the calculation, okay? But many people make a mistake in the calculation. So that's why you need to write down these things, not do on your calculator, in the test, right? If you write down this correctly in the test, you're going to get some points, okay? But if you just do everything on your calculator, and then you make a mistake, don't get any points. Okay? Do you understand? So, can anybody tell me what's this number here? 20,000. 20,000. Okay, and then what's this number on the bottom line? 1.276. Okay, so then what's this number altogether? One. 0. Point, what's here? 0. 0.9? 0. 0. 0.8? 7.83? So 20,000 multiplied by 0. 0.217? So what's the answer? Three hundred and twenty. So which are you going to take? 4,000 today? Or 1,000 every year? 1,000 every year, right? The present value of getting 1,000 every year for the next five years with a 5% interest rate is going to be $4,320. Okay? That's higher than getting $4,000 today. Okay? So then the last thing we need to find is what is the present value of this? 
5,500. So use our simple present value. You can use three decimal places there. Whoa. Should we always use three or two decimal places? Where? 1.273. Uh, here? Yeah. Uh, so I had a question in the test. Do you need to use two or three decimal places? But uh, I think it's okay to use two decimal places. Mm. Might be more accurate to use three, but two decimal places might be okay in this case. Right? The value would be very different if you use two. Okay, then three. Three decimal places. If, if we run it off, if we run it off, it's still going to be the same. If we run it off, you think it won't be very different? No, I'm, I'm asking if we round it off, like because. If we round it off, he says it's going to be different. What's the difference? How much is the difference? Twenty-eight. I expect twenty-eight. Yeah, because you run it off to two two decimal yeah. places. Yeah. Four thousand three hundred twenty-eight. Oh. Would be twenty-eight instead yeah. of twenty. Yeah. Wow. Mm. If you in the exam, if you give me the answer is this with three decimal places and you write four three two eight, then I know it's correct. Okay, that's not much difference. Okay. So that, in that case, that's okay. Okay. Any more questions? <coughs> Okay then, uh, just we can do this, somebody can do this quickly. What if, if you get 5,500 in five years and the interest rate is 5%, how much is that worth today? 4,310, okay? So we just had the simple, that one is just the simple present value, okay? Simple present value is going to be lower than 5,500, so on the bottom line, okay? We put 1 plus 0.05 to the power of 5, which we already calculated, okay, was 1.2 something, okay, and the answer will be 400 and 310, so that's lower, okay, so we're still going to take this one, this is the best option, okay, any questions? This equation looks quite big and complicated, right, but it just helps us to do more quickly, because if we have to calculate the present value for each year and add them together, it takes longer. So using this equation, we can do it in a shorter way. Okay. So this was the answer, right? So the next one is growing annuity. Growing annuity means we're getting the same amount of money every year. Let's say we're a company and we're making a guess about our future income. Next year we're going to make 500, right? But we think our revenues are going to grow every year by 2% or 3%, okay? We're going to guess like that kind of an estimate. So next year, one, it will be 500, two, it's going to be 500 <coughs> multiplied by 1 plus the growth rate, 0 0.02, 2%, okay, squared, okay? This one is, it grows from the year zero, okay? So it's growing by 2% every year. So this is what the cash flow looks like, okay? First year, it's going to be 510. This number is going to be 510. And then it's going to grow at the constant rate every year. So because it's growing at the constant rate every year, we can make an equation again, okay? To, more quickly than calculating the cash flow every year. So this is the equation on your book, also on page 20. Even more complicated equation. Because this time we need to put in G, the growth rate. So we put in the annuity, the growth rate, in this case R is the interest rate, and the time. Okay? So let's practice this one. No? What you, need, what you need to do is put things into the equation and make a calculation. You don't like making calculations? So, for example, we own a gold mine. 
Do you understand gold mine? Yeah. Makes gold. So we're going to get this much gold every year. Okay, the price of gold is $300 an ounce, and we, we expect the price of gold to increase by 3% a year. So what if we want to find the present value of our gold? So we're going to start off with 5,000 ounces of gold at $300. So how much money is that? 5,000 ounces at $300. So we've got three, five, five is 15,000, and add two zeros is 1.5 million. Okay, is that correct? Okay, so that's how much our gold is worth. But it's going to increase 3% a year. Okay, so what is the present value of all your gold? Just it's perpetual on forever. It's going to increase 3% a year. So next year it's going to be plus 3%, next year plus 3%, plus 3%. Okay, so it's in order to do this, we just put into the equation G, what's G? So 0 0.03, right? What is the interest rate, or? 4%, okay, what's the annuity? What's the annuity, what's the amount of money that we're talking about every year? Hmm? No? One and a half million. How much money, one and a half million. So you, you don't have to do that, you can do 1.5, you can do your calculation in millions, right? So annuity is 1.5. 1.5 million, okay? So now we can do the equation, right? So, uh, did I put the time here? Let's say the time is 20 years. We can put 20 years here, okay? So let's say the time is for the gold mine is just lasting for 20 years. After 20 years, all our gold is finished. Okay? So we can put 20 here as the time. Okay? So you can look at the equation on the page uh, 20. Okay? And you can try to put in the numbers. Page 20, here. We did present value of a simple cash flow, present value of sum of cash flows, present value of an annuity, and the fourth one, present value of a growing annuity. Okay? The annuity is growing every year by a set rate. So just use this equation here and put in the numbers. There's four numbers you need to put into the equation. Time, 20 years, annuity. It might help in the test if you write down the things, right? A equals 1.5. N equals 20. Okay? Uh, I or R is equals is called R or I is equals to 0 0.04. G is equals to 0 0.03. Okay? It's clear if you write it out like that first. This is the annuity, this is the time, this is the interest rate, and this is the growth rate. Okay? And then you put that into this equation. And do the calculation. Okay? How did I get the annuity? In this case, you have to figure out from the question. You know, the price of gold is $300 an ounce. Do you understand ounce? Ounce is a weight, weight, like ounce is 200 grams, okay? Or 10 grams, or 12 grams, it's a weight of gold. So that costs $300. And we have, we are getting 5,000 ounces every year, okay? So our annuity will be this, 5,000 multiplied by 300. Okay, 5,000 ounces, and the price is 300 per one ounce. So that's 1.5 million dollars we're going to get every year. Okay? But we expect that to grow. So we need to put in the growth rate. So 
this one is useful for a company, right? You're setting up a company and you say, I expect to get this revenue every year, but I expect my company will grow. My company will grow by 4% or 5% a year, okay? So then you can use this equation to find the present value of all of the money you expect to get. amount of gold every year. At least I estimate. Okay? I have the same amount of workers, the same amount of machinery, so I'm going to get this much gold every year. Okay? And sell for this much money. Another example of an annuity is the interest on the government bond. Coupon on the government bond of 2%. So I'm going to get 200,000 every year. I know that for sure. That's an annuity. Okay? Annuity, I get the same amount of money over and over again. Okay? If you deposit money in the bank, you can get an annuity. Right? Or in the bond, you can get an annuity. Get the same amount of money over and over again. How do you say annuity in Korean? Did anybody find it in the dictionary? Yangum? How do you say pension in Korean? Pension. Isn't pension too? Pension and annuity is the same word in Korean? Maybe because pensions are often paid as annuities, right? If you have a pension, you often get the same amount of money every month from the government or from the other place, right? So, annuity just means you get the same amount of money. Okay, so let's just try to write out the equation in the correct way, okay? So, Cho Chang Yun, where is Cho Chang Yun? Can you write out the equation? Here. <laughs> when we say million, when you're doing calculations for millions, don't put all the zeros, okay? Just you do it in millions, 1.5. You don't even have to write M, right? Just 1.5. At the end, you can write in M. Okay, so well done, so thank you. So did anybody find the answer? What's the answer? 96 million? 
250,000. Okay, so you can just write out if you want, like 26.25 million. Okay? Did you get this? Are you shaking your head? No, I Don't agree? Did you get another answer? <laughs> okay. Similar, very similar? Okay. Yeah. Uh, 27.1. Yeah. 27.3. Yeah, just it. 27. Maybe it was closer to 27. Then yeah. Okay. Do you have any question about this one? Some people can make. Mind you, don't make a mistake here, right? This is in brackets. So this is 1.03 divided by this to the power of this, and then afterwards is one minus. Okay. And then you just multiply by here. So, <laughs> this one is useful for your life. Is the other way around. Calculating annuities when we know the present value or we know the future value. Okay? So if we look on our book, we're talking on page 21. Annuities. Finding the annuity. So for example, I get a, a mortgage loan for a house. Am I going to pay all the money in one time? Or pay monthly over 20 years? What am I going to do? Pay all the money for my house in one time? Or pay every month for 20 years? Every month for 20 years, right? Unless, are you a drug dealer? Mayaki Palayo? No, if you're a drug dealer, then you can buy cash, right? Buy your house in cash, no problem. But most people, they have to buy their house in loans, right? By the way, I'm not recommending to sell drugs, right? It's not a recommendation, just joking, right? In the end, you're going to go to prison or get killed, so the house will be no good, right? So we have to calculate how much we need to pay back every month, okay? So we have to find the annuity when we know the present value. So for example, we get a loan for a house of 200 million won, EOC. Okay? So the interest rate, this time we're going to do monthly. The interest rate is 3.6% a year, but a month it's 0.03% a month. Okay? The repayment period is 30 years. How many months is in 30 years? 360. So calculate your monthly repayment. Okay? So we can use this equation to calculate the monthly repayment. So if you work in the bank, you'll have to do these kind of calculations, right? Somebody asks you for the loan and you tell them how much they're going to have to pay every month. They want to pay the same amount every month for the next 30 years. Okay? So how much are they if they pay the same amount every month for 30 years, how much is that going to be? Okay, you're working in the bank, so tell me the answer. You're going to use this equation. Okay, I want, I want to know, and you have to know about how much I need to pay back every month. You're going to tell me. So here we put what's P? P is the present value, right? What's the present value? What's the time? 360, we're doing it once. Okay? What's the interest rate? A lot of people make a mistake here. They write it as 0 0.03, right? 0.3% is 0.03. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you.
Потому что три сотых от процента. Даже не один процент, а три сотых. Окей, я дам слушать. Эмити, я мучал бы. А у меня Okay, so let's practice writing out the equation. As I said in the exam, even if you write out the equation, you can get some points, right? If you make a mistake later in the calculation, at least you still get some points. So, uh, Han Gyeong Jung. Where's Han Gyeong Jung? Not here. Talk to me. Yes, can you write out the equation here? So just come up to the board and write out the equation. Put the right numbers in the right place. It doesn't matter if you make a mistake, just try. Yes. Is that correct? Can anybody say if that's correct? What's the problem? Uh, 360 months. 0 0.003. I, I warned about this problem at the start, right? Make sure you have the right number of zeros. Not 0 0.3. 
Because we're, this is a percent. Percent, we have to add two decimal points. Okay? Do you understand? Percent is adding two decimal points. Okay? Then what was the other problem? The end was to be 360. Okay? 30 years is 360 months. 30 multiplied by 12 equals 360. Okay? So we should get the repayment is about 909,000 a month. Okay? So that is, that sounds right. Okay? If we multiply this by 30, it's going to be more than 200 million. So check your answer. If your answer here is out one decimal point, pay, point if it's 90,000 a month, that's wrong. It can't be possible that you pay just 90,000. It's too cheap, right? If it's 9 million a month, that's too much. How could you pay 9 million a month for 200 million? For, for that many years. Okay, so just think about your answer when you get your answer. Okay? So do you have any question about that? <laughs> so, uh, we have just one question left in time value of money. It's the last one, don't worry. This one is for your pension. Do you want to have a pension? Yes. You say in Korea the meaning is yago. So annuity payment is common for the pension. So you want to save 400 million won for your retirement. Do you think that's enough? Sock, is that enough for your retirement? Saving sock? Okay. So how much do you need to save every month if you start saving when you're 35? Let's say you don't start saving when you're young. You spend your money on other things, right? So you start saving a little bit late. So you've got 30 years to save for your pension, between 35 and 65. So how much do you need to save every month to get this much at the end? So this is annuity given future value. We know the future value we want for our pension. You understand pension? Okay, when we stop working, we get paid some money. And we want to know how much do we need to save every month to get this much money. Okay, so we use this equation. So annuity equals future value, interest rate over 1 plus the interest rate, and minus 1. Okay, so again it's monthly. So it should be getting better now. So let's just take two minutes. And I, we want, you don't have to do the calculation, just write out the equation, okay? So just write out the correct equation, like you did here, okay? You already calculated? That was quick, you're getting better, right? So take a couple of minutes and write out the equation correctly. Put the right place in the right equation. So this one is on page, the last equation on page 21, okay, the last one, it is annuity given future value. We know the future value, but we don't know how much we need to save every month. いろいろ<笑><笑> That's what I'm saying. I'm going to do. 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 I'm going to do.
So I had a question here that maybe some students use a different number of decimal points, they get a slightly different answer, right? Then I'm going to see that in the exam. Some students got this answer and some students slightly different. But both of them are correct. Okay? I can see you did the calculation. You wrote down the important thing, you wrote down the equation correctly. Okay? And I can look at your calculation and see how many decimal points you used. Okay? And it's correct. Okay? It's just a case of using the different decimal point. Okay? So then let's write this one out. So the annuity is what we're looking for. What is the future value? 400. Okay, what's I? 003. One plus 0 0.003. Power of what's N? 316 minus 1. Okay, did anybody get the answer? What's the answer? Zero point six. So that is how much in one? Six hundred and eighteen thousand one. That's a lot of money, right? Are you stressed now? You need to find a good job to save this much money every month, just for your pension. If you want to have this much at the end, right? And then that might be enough for your pension. Okay. Are you all stressed now? Life is, don't want to live anymore? <laughs> and then what about your house? You need to pay this much for your mortgage, for your house. What are you going to do? You have to pay that, that much? One million for your mortgage. You should buy one for your pension. That's 1.6 before you start. Huh? So, I gave you this page uh, today. So, this is your first assignment for 10% of your grade, okay? So, uh, just this time, two weeks later, Friday, two weeks later, you can give me this back, okay? With your name and your ID number. And also, uh, in the next class, we're going to make the study group. So, the idea of the study group is that uh, you work together with the other students, so if you're having some problem, you can ask somebody in your study group to help you, who understands, okay? And in fact, with your study group, you can do it together. You can all give me the same answers if you like, okay? But it, would, it shouldn't be just one person does everything and everybody else copies them, right? That's not the case. It's just you discuss together in your study group, okay? So the study group should have four members. So in the next class, uh, if you don't let me know your study group, then I will randomly assign you to a study group for the next class. Okay? Do you have any questions? This is also on the, if you lose the page, you can print it out again, it's on the website. And maybe some people are still not familiar that much with the website. On the website, you can watch the video of the classes. Okay? So if you didn't understand something about the class, or you missed something, you can watch the class again on the website or watch just some part of the class, okay? So let's finish there then for today. Did everybody sign the attendance list? No. no. Why not? Did somebody leave the attendance list on their desk and didn't pass it around? Yes. Please don't do that. Don't leave the attendance list on your desk. Okay. Everybody needs to check the attendance list out. It doesn't matter. Thank <laughs> you.